this topic we will see what are the changes which occur during high altitude physiology i mean to say that whenever you go to mountain whenever you go to mountain okay first of all first of all the things which happen is that we will have hypoxic hypoxia we will have hypoxic hypoxia it means po2 is less po2 is less there are so many types of hypoxia like hypoxic hypoxia anemic hypoxia stagnant hypoxia but in this condition whenever you go to mountain whenever you go to mountain there is less po2 causing hypoxic hypoxia and in this condition peripheral chemo receptors are activated remember one more things these are not activated in anemic hypoxia these are not activated peripheral chemo receptors are not activated in anemic hypoxia because po2 is normal in that condition po2 is normal in that condition so they will not be stimulated but in this condition when you are going to mountain there is less po2 activating peripheral chemo receptors because they have oxygen sensitive potassium channel these peripheral chemo receptors have oxygen sensitive potassium channel so if po2 is less they will be activated and when they are activated of course they will cause hyperventilation they will cause hyper ventilation leading to carbon dioxide wash out leading to carbon dioxide wash out and when carbon dioxide is wash out what it will cause it will cause respiratory alkalosis it will cause respiratory alkalosis and we always know that there are two main organ of compensation of ph one is your lung other is your kidney if there is respiratory alkalosis it will be compensated by metabolic acidosis but because there is respiratory alkalosis it will cause left shift of oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve in acidosis there is right shift in alkalosis there is left shift of oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve but as i told you whenever there is respiratory alkalosis it will cause compensatory metabolic acidosis okay and when there is metabolic acidosis the shift will be converted to right so initial there is left shift after that there will be right shift so this point is very important you should know that whenever we go to mountain initially there will be left shift of the curve and then there will be right shift of the curve and what will happen to the circulation see whenever in the systemic circulation there is hypoxia okay there is because of increase in pressure drive your vasomotor centers will be activated because vasomotor centers they are most importantly stimulated by hypercapnia or also hypoxia so when there is hypercapnia or hypoxia they will be stimulated and they always cause increase in the blood pressure and also increase in your heart rate okay so they will cause a type of hypertension bp will be more okay now pulmonary capillary blood pressure will also be increased isn't it but your lung is the only place where vasoconstriction occur not vaso dilution not vaso dilation because in most of the places hypoxia causes vaso dilation your lung is the exception and it has been asked in so many year every question that which it will place you are having vaso dilation and answer is your lung lungs are having vaso dilation so constriction rest all have vaso dilation so because there is vaso constriction it can cause pulmonary hypertension also so not only normal systemic hypertension 
when we go to mountain can also cause pulmonary hypertension and in the cerebral circulation despite hypoxia okay cerebral blood flow will increase remember this point very important now in the blood hypoxia will cause release of erythropoietin from the interstitial cell of kidney and they will increase your stem cell so within 2 hour of ascent to the mountain rbc are increased erythropoietin is also increased and within few days if you see they are immature they are immature nucleated rbc they are immature nucleated rbc and within one week or you can say four to five days you can say there can be new rbc there will be new rbc so these are the changes and then in the tissue level vascular endothelial growth factor increase causing more and more angiogenesis now this is about the physiological appetization but what is the sickness what is the acute mountain sickness which occur between 24 hours to 7 days or you can say one day to one week initially there can be headache there can be nausea there can be vomiting and there can be also insomnia but if this is mild to moderate it will only cause hypoventilation or also interstitial edema and if it is severe it can cause vein edema why vein edema due to cerebral vasodilation i told you it is the lung where it causes vasoconstriction otherwise it causes vasodilation so if acute mountain sickness is severe it can cause vein edema also otherwise only hypoventilation and interstitial edema will occur then what is the treatment what can be the treatment treatment can be this was asked in latest NIT PG 2020 astazolamide is given why it is given to increase acclimatization dexamethasone is given to relieve your symptoms steroids are used analgesics can be given and prothazine can be given for systemic, uh, systemic relief and oxygen can also be given now what is HACE high altitude cerebral edema when someone has ataxia along with or it cannot be present mental state change it is called as haze high altitude cerebral edema if cerebral edema is to high extent it can cause ataxia and what is HAPE high altitude pulmonary edema it occurs within two to four days of ascent and it is uneven and patchy pulmonary edema and treatment is also the same it is oxygen nifedipine or glucocorticoids. in this hypertension can also occur 